I'm going to show you how I write prose in a text editor. This is inspired by two things. First, it's inspired by software development technique, coding. And it's also inspired by a wonderful application available on Windows called WriteMonkey. It's a markdown editor with really many great savvy features, very useful. So the first thing I want to do is I want to edit something I'm working on. So here is a paper I'm working on. And you can see it's marked down. It's using a monospace font, which is uh, best, for instance, when you're using tables, things like that. And I also want to open the script that I'm going to use to remember what it is I want to talk about. So here I have two tabs. I have the script tab and the complicity tab. Now to help me move through the points I want to touch on in the right order and so I don't forget anything, I want to put this in a side pane. So I could say uh, there's a plugin called Origami and I want to move it to the right. So I'm going to move file to pane on the right. And then I'm going to, since those are relatively narrow, particularly the manuscript that I'm interested in editing, I'm going to move to a wider screen layout. And then I'm going to shrink this one a little bit. And I'm good to go. So one of the things I like about writing in a text editor is one, because I don't have to worry about presentation and double spaces, this is a fairly, uh, I wouldn't say condensed, but parsimonious representation of the text. And I can see quite a lot of text in one go, which is nice for coherency. Also, it's very easy to navigate. So for example, I already went to a table, because I can see the table here. I can see there's a multi-column layout here. Uh, it's very easy to navigate by way of this sidebar. Another nice thing is I can navigate by way of the section headings. And of course, this is searchable. If you have a really big document, I could do intent. Now I'm in this section, Facebook, Facebook's intent. That's nice. And I also use something, a plugin that's inspired from Emacs, which is a very quick way to move to a bit of text. So for example, I'd say I'm interested in the line where I talk about Michel Foucault. I could just, you know, mouse over to that area. But with eighths jump, I can do something different. I can type a character that I'm interested in, so F for Foucault. And then you can see all the Fs in the present view have been highlighted and replaced with a letter. And K takes me to Michel Foucault. It's a very quick way to navigate about the screen. So the navigation is really nice. Also, one of the things I really love about text editors like Sublime Text and the free software Atom Text Editor is multi-line edit. This is very handy when you're writing software, but it also is useful in prose. So for example, say I want to turn these colons into dashes. I can select them all and turn it into a dash. Of course, I don't really want that, so it's also easy to revert. I'm now writing using something called, on the web, semantic line feeds. And that means simply every sentence is its own line. This is really nice for when you're using version control software. I use Git, which I'll talk a little bit about shortly. And so if I Delete a line, it's very clear what happened when you when you look at your differences, your diffs. But also, I, what I really like about it is I can edit things uh, very nicely. So if I have this line and I decide this should follow the subsequent line, I don't have to copy and paste it in an awkward way. I just control L to select, and then I can cursor it up and cursor it down. Now you'll see here on the left, I'm running something called git gutter, which tells me text change I've made. So you can see it says you've deleted a line here and you've added a line here. I'll come back to that in a little bit more, but that's also very nice. And 
Given that I'm working in a text editor that is typically used for software, folding is a very nice feature. So I can fold sections using a plugin that works for Markdown. Very easy. I also, given this is Markdown, I can write little comments to myself or with my collaborators. And again, this is just text uh, enclosed in HTML comment, which is also a comment in Markdown. And so say I wanted to select all of my comments and fold them. That is certainly possible. I'll just use the right regular expression. And then I would select them all. And then I would use my fold key short, keyboard shortcut. And now throughout the document, all the comments are folded. Of course, it's easy to unfold them as well. And I accidentally turned that into uppercase. So again, I can turn that into lowercase. If I want to just focus on this particular paragraph, a lot of the Zen or simple text editors allow you to do that, just to hide everything except what you're focused on immediately. I can select this text, invert the selection, and again, fold everything else. Then I can just focus on that bit of text. And I can unfold it. Something else I like to do is a attribute of good prose is you can get a sense of what the author is trying to convey just by reading the first line of every paragraph, just the topic sentences of every paragraph. And so when I'm fairly well along in the quality of my draft, I like to make sure that all my topic sentences could be read alone. So again, I can look for just the first lines of the new paragraphs. I can select them all. I can invert that selection and then I can fold. And that wasn't perfect. I could tweak it a little bit more to make it a little more elegant. But here you can see this is the first sentence of the first paragraph, the second sentence, first paragraph, first sentence of the second paragraph, first sentence of the third paragraph. And then I can read just those and edit those to make sure that they flow and it uh, really helps with coherent paragraph flow. So that's the folding. Let's unfold everything. And filtering can also be handy. So here I have a reference to Olivia Little. I might want to see how many times I talk about Little. Or maybe I'm at near the bottom of the document and I'm wondering if I've already mentioned this person earlier. So I can see how many times. So I can do Control K, Control F, and I could say Pally Habit. And then it filtered the previous tab, and these are the lines where whatever I typed into that field occur. So I can see how many times I mention it, have I already mentioned it, that sort of thing. There's also multi-pane writing. I've already demonstrated that with respect to having this little thing over here. But sometimes if you have something where you lay out some concepts very nicely, as I do here, and I'm writing layer, later on in the document, and I want to be able to reference those easily, I can create another pane. So for example, I could, I could clone the current pane above. And again, here's this bit. And then when I'm writing down here, wherever I'm writing, I have what's up here as a reference, which is, again, very nice. I'm going to close the document now. I'm then going to destroy this current pane. And that happened to move this as well. So again, let's move this to the right. OK, so those are the benefits of editing in a text editor. But I also have some bonus things. So sometimes when I'm writing, 
I borrow a nice feature of WriteMonkey called a repository or a repo. So if I have some sort of text like this introductory paragraph, and I don't think it's really working, but I don't want to delete it, and it's really a fetter to aggressive quality editing, uh, if I stick it in a repo, I don't have to worry about all the craft I put into that particular bit of prose. It's still there, but allows me to clear the deck. So I have my shortcut and it disappears. It's gone, but it's not lost. because so I can always go back to complicity repo. And here it is, it's still there. But of course I don't, that is a paragraph I want. So we'll restore it and we're good to go. The other thing that I already alluded to is I'm using something called Git gutter. And so when you make changes to the document compared to what you previously did in Git, it'll eventually show what some of those changes are. And so for example, I added these parentheses here. I added that there. So now it's a proper set of comments again. And I can, I only have two commits on this particular, two versions on this particular one. Um, but I can go back to my initial commit two days ago and see all the differences compared to that. So again, I can see that I used to have a paragraph there, but it's gone. I could restore it. So now it's restored. I can look down elsewhere in the document and I can see I made some sort of edit here. I made some sort of edit here. And this is nice because these little indicators show me what text is green. So if I have an editing section and then I step away for a while or even a couple of days and then I want to see, well, what was I editing before that was green? New paragraph. This stuff is the stuff that I should be paying attention to when I'm editing. But let's again set it to where the last save actually happened. And then finally, let me show you my short search shortcuts. Now this isn't specific to this particular editor, really any editor, uh, but it's nice. So I use a clipboard manager and shortcut key creator called copy queue. So if there is a word that I wanna search about, I have a couple of keyboard shortcuts. So complicity, I can search Google, I can search a dictionary, I can search the thesaurus, I can search Wikipedia, or I could search my bibliographic mind maps uh, via the web interface. So in other videos, I have talked about how I actually scrape information on the web and take notes and how I manage my bibliography. And so these are all the texts and notes that I've taken about things I've read about complicity. So here's a keyword complicity. Here's a bit of quoted excerpt that has the word complicity. Uh, here's a summary of a particular reading about complicity. And of course I can click that. And so this isn't really specific to the text editor. It's just really an important part of the way that I work. So I hope that's been useful. If you have any questions, let me know.